Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're gonna to be covering camera movement. A lot of you guys have suggested this on Instagram, so I'm super excited to open up a brand new Blender document and show you guys a few tricks on how to create camera movement. Now go ahead and check out my previous tutorial on how to make a camera rotate around an object 360 degrees. Now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just simplify everything. I'm going to delete the light and we're gonna focus strictly on the animation of the camera itself. There is a lot that you can do here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you guys how to sort of zoom in on uh, like this cube here while also rotating. So this is gonna involve an empty. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in an empty plane axis and you can't see it right now because it's inside the cube. So I'm gonna use S to scale it up. And now that we have our empty, we want to parent our camera to the empty. So you click on the camera, shift click the empty, control P, click on object. And now the, the empty actually controls the camera. I'm also going to minimize my face a little bit so you guys can actually see what's going on here. Sorry about that. All right, so basically now that we have the empty controlling the camera, we can now easily rotate the camera around our scene like this. Let me make sure you guys can see this on the stream, I apologize. Let me pull this down a little bit. There you go. Um, so now that we have the empty controlling our camera, we can animate that rotational movement. So let me snap to the camera and show you what I mean. So as you can see, we're rotating around our cube when we adjust the empty's rotation. But what we want to do is we want to animate the empty's rotation and its location as well. Or we can animate the empty and the camera. So I'll show you what I mean right now. So I'm going to pull up the timeline just a little bit so we can actually see what's going on here. I'm going to move my face to the top right, right about there, and I'm going to move this up here as well. All right, so we have our empty selected. What you want to do is you want to insert a keyframe on frame one, insert the rotation, and then I'm going to move forward to frame 120, and then I'm actually going to rotate this any way I like, maybe to this angle right here, and I'm going to press I over while I'm hovering over this rotation. So now we have this nice smooth camera movement, right? Super simple, kind of slow. I'm gonna speed it up. I'm gonna move this keyframe with G as a shortcut. I'm gonna move it over to frame 90. And then I'm gonna play this back. That's looking pretty good. Now let's say we wanted it to start slow and then speed up. I'm gonna highlight both keyframes, right click, interpolation mode, and in this case, I would do exponential. And now let's go ahead and watch what this does. It's gonna start very slow, and then it's gonna speed up. Or what we can do is use one of my favorite interpolation modes, which is back. So let's go ahead and click on back. Now watch what it does now. I personally love that, so I'm gonna keep it at that. You can make it linear, you can make it Bezier. Whatever you guys prefer, that's totally fine. Now that we have our empty animated and our rotation looks good, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my camera, right? If you don't see the camera in the top right, click on this drop down where it says empty, and you'll see the camera right here. Click on your camera. And now insert, using I as the shortcut, insert location and rotation, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert that on frame one, jump forward to, what was it, frame 90? I believe it was frame 90. Now click back on the camera, and now we're gonna insert a new keyframe. This is where we get to have fun with how we want to look at our cube. So in this case, we started out at a 63 degree angle. I'm gonna actually move that up to closer to a 90. I'll just set it to 90. And then clicking on G as our shortcut, I'm gonna move down so that we're very level with the cube. And then using my shortcut I, insert a location and rotation keyframe. I'm gonna go to my output settings and I'm gonna make our last frame 90. Now let's go ahead and play back and see what we have. Some nice smooth camera movement. And remember guys, if you don't like the interpolation mode of the empty, highlight both keyframes, right click, change it to Bezier or something that you prefer and we can fine tune this in the, um, in the graph editor. And again, you can make this slower, faster, whatever you like. Let's say that you like the rotation speed, but you want the camera to level out even after we rotate. Click on the camera and move that last keyframe out to frame 120. So now, if we watch, we're gonna rotate and then the camera is still gonna move down and level out with our object. Rotation finishes at 90, but the camera's still moving down. So now you guys can really play around with this in the graph editor and get it to be however you want. Now, I actually used this technique in a recent reel where I made a bunch of coins drop and I actually filmed that in slow motion. This is basically the exact same technique that I used, but 
the empty and the camera were on the same um, the same timing. So it was exactly like this, basically. And I believe the camera didn't tilt at such an extreme angle. It was probably more like 85. Bring that up. And let's just add in a floor plane real quick. And I want to show you guys what this is going to look like. Let's go to our side view. I'm going to put that floor plane right under our cube there. That looks good. Snap back to our camera. And let's just go ahead and add a few materials in here so we can help better visualize this effect. I'm going to switch over to Cycles, GPU. I'm just going to add in an environment texture. Let's just go for like a nice outdoor scene. Or maybe this, this one's really nice. We'll use this. I'm going to click on our cube. I'm just going to give it a little bevel. I am going to give it a few segments. Right click, Shade Smooth. I'm going to give it a metallic material with low roughness very low roughness and then I'm gonna click on my plane scale that up give that a new material I'm just gonna make it a darker color so we can see this camera movement I'm gonna quickly save this to the desktop as camera movements and I'm gonna show you guys how to add a separate camera so you can get even smoother camera movements on your second shot around so let's go ahead and click on our camera and let's enable depth of field let's click on our cube and let's turn our let's start our depth of field really really low that's a little bit too low. I'm actually going to click off of our cube and just adjust this by hand. All right, that's about the start. So we'll do nine meters and then we'll do an F of, uh, we'll do an F stop of one. Just have ever so slightly blurred background. We'll try 0.3. That looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and play this back and see what we get. That looks really nice. Um, and then we can smooth it out even more with keyframes. It abruptly kind of stops there, so I might even have it go a little bit further. Or what we can do is we can actually click on our empty, highlight these keyframes, go over to the graph editor, and then we're gonna click on A to highlight all, period. Oops, period's not working, doesn't wanna work here. All right, I'm just gonna zoom out with the scroll wheel, and you're gonna see our actual um, our timeline where our curves are. So they're basically just two curves that we can adjust to make our timing exactly the way we want it. So now this is where you can decide exactly what you want to do with this. Um, I'll probably take this one and drag it out a little bit more. So I'll take this and just scale it out. S is our scale shortcut. Let's go ahead and play that back now. That actually looks much smoother. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the camera. But as you can see, our camera is linear. So I'm gonna go back to our dope sheet. I'm gonna highlight these. I'm going to right click interpolation mode, Bezier. As you can see, that line disappeared. Now I'm gonna go back over to my graph editor. And now as you can see, we have everything we need here to mess around with. I'm gonna highlight this top right keyframe here. And I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit, give us a little bit smoother of a transition. Now let's go ahead and play this back and see what this looks like. much better now as you can see it's a little bit slow so maybe what i'll do is i'll actually scale up the first keyframe i'm going to undo everything i just did and scale up the first keyframe a little bit so it starts slower and it sort of speeds up towards the end so let's go ahead and watch this again again this is where you guys can pretty much do whatever you want i think that looks really really good and if you want it to be even smoother just go ahead and expand your timeline move the keyframes further apart and you'll have an even smoother transition now, I personally love this. I think this looks really, really good. And this is a really easy way to kind of create a nice path for your camera to follow. Um, you can actually also make your camera actually follow a path, but I'm not going to go through that today. I will be putting that out in a future tutorial. But this so far is looking really good. What I normally do with a lot of client projects is I'll set up one camera, have one shot of the same thing happening, and then I'll set up a completely separate camera, and I'll actually go ahead and render a completely separate scene but the same animation is happening, just a different camera movement. So let's go over another type of camera movement. Let me go, oh, we are back in the layout. I'm just gonna kind of pull this down a little bit and I'm gonna click on our dope sheet right here. Okay, perfect. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add in another camera. I'm gonna pull uh, my webcam down here for you guys and this, perfect. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go add camera and now there's a new camera in our scene. It should just be towards the center. There it is right there. I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little green icon in the hierarchy, which is gonna snap us to that camera. Or sorry, it's gonna select that camera as our active camera. And I'm gonna press zero to snap to that. 
and now we can move this however we like. I'm gonna show you guys one of my favorite types of shots and that's just a classic panning shot. Um, let's go ahead and move this where we want it. I'm actually gonna go to the top down view because it's easier and I'm gonna move it to the side here like this. As you can see on frame one, we're gonna go ahead and insert a keyframe once we're happy with where we're at. First, I wanna move this down. I'm also gonna give this an 85 millimeter lens, <laughs> not 856, 85, there we go. And I'm gonna move it back on the X axis just a little bit. Now I'm gonna push it off to the side here and I'm gonna give our Z rotation just a little more intensity there. I think that looks perfect. And guys, pro tip when you're working with the camera, click on viewport display and turn this value all the way up where it says pass part out. Sorry, I realize you can't see that. Right here it says pass part out. You wanna just turn that all the way up. And now you can really narrow in on your shot, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I have my camera selected, insert, location, and rotation. I like to usually do that because typically I do, I do keyframe both. So then I'm gonna zoom in so I can see everything that's going on. I'm gonna go to frame 120 and I'm just gonna move my location of my camera down on the Z axis. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, oops, I wasn't on frame 120, sorry guys. I'm gonna do the same thing I just did, move my camera down on the Z axis, insert location and rotation, and now if we watch, we have this nice smooth shot from top to bottom. Super simple, we're just keyframing the location of the camera. But again, if we wanna take it one step further, we go to frame 120, right? We just slightly adjust the actual angle here. And maybe we just move it off to the side a little bit like that. Now go ahead and watch this again. Now we have this nice smooth movement as well. I'm actually gonna click on our cube and just change the color to blue so it's a little bit easier to see. Or maybe purple, that's fine, or pink, whatever that is. So now let's go ahead and watch again. See how I have this nice movement coming down and rotating? So we're only using two values. We're using the locational value and the rotational value. Sorry, not locational, but the location value and rotation value. And very easily we can create these awesome shots. Now, again, guys, if we click on our camera that we have selected and we go to our graph editor, we can do the same thing that we did last time. But before we do that, highlight all your keyframes, right click, interpolation mode, Bezier, now go over to our graph editor, and as you can see, oops, gotta select the camera again. Here's our two points where everything is happening. Take one of those and scale it up. I'll probably take the first one again because I thought that effect looked really nice. And now if we go ahead and play this back, it'll start slower, kind of speed up towards the end. I think that looks really good, and if you wanted the reverse, you would scale up the second keyframe. So that just like that, we have some nice camera movement. That looks awesome. And again, we can do one more type of shot if we want. I actually think those two are just enough to understand what it takes to set up a cool camera shot. But also there's no depth of field enabled here, but that's that's fine. Lower this roughness a little bit, create a little bit more dramatic scene here. I actually am gonna click on my camera and I'm gonna enable the depth of field option. And let's just see what we can accomplish here. I'm gonna click on our cube and I'm just gonna give our f-stop 0.2 or maybe slowly raise it holding shift so now if you hold shift and you hover over these you can actually fine-tune exactly where you want your f-stop to start or sorry your distance to start and then your f-stop you can make that whatever you'd like like I think that looks pretty cool now if we had some texturing on this you would be able to see it so much more um, more in focus but I mean look at that that is such a nice camera shot with minimal effort really and then you guys already know that if you go and watch the other tutorial, you'll understand exactly how to create a rotational camera shot where you're rotating around the object. So just like that, guys, we created two really nice camera shots. Now you're probably wondering, Kenny, how am I gonna switch back and forth between the two? I don't remember how to do that. Let me just show you one more time exactly how to do that. This little green icon on the top right, just click on that and it'll immediately snap you to the other camera. So now if you zoom out, out of our cameras, you can see in our scene, we have two cameras here. We have two separate shots that we've created. The first one looks like this. It's controlled by the empty and the rotation and location of our camera. And then the second one looks like this. And it's only controlled by the camera. And in the future, I will be putting out a tutorial that will cover how to create a camera shot that follows a path. 
It's very similar to my fluid animation. If you guys watch that, which I highly suggest that you watch next, because that is a very interesting tutorial where you can create some incredible effects with fluid simulations. But that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. I think I covered just enough for you guys to understand how to do some really cool camera shots. And I hope you learned something. I hope this was useful for you, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. All right, guys, take it easy.